Hi everyone, I'm Avi, one of the co-founders and dean of the Flatiron School. A question I get asked a lot is, how did I become such a great programmer? Or how do you become a great programmer? So I wanted to share a few stories about kind of how I think I got here and how I think you can get there. I guess in an ideal world, I really wish I had some sort of spell or magical wand or some secret I could tell you about programming that would explain how I got to where I'm at and how you can follow in those steps and get to where you want to go. But unfortunately, the only secret I've discovered about becoming great at code or really at anything, at least in my own life, is just that I'm willing to work harder and for a longer period of time than most people. So I'm in college. Uh, it's the middle of sophomore year. I think at that point I'm still a first semester freshman because I'd failed or dropped so many classes that I was basically a year behind in credits. So I was probably gonna graduate in like six or seven years. But I had been doing some kind of web design, like really light programming work for this hedge fund in the city. Um, and I remember the CEO called me one day because uh, he thought I was really funny. We had a good relationship when I interned there the summer before. And he called me and he said, um, Avi, we want to build this program that analyzes or predicts the average settlement in personal injury lawsuits over time. So like if I told you that uh, I was in a car accident and I have a C6 spinal injury and I was in the passenger seat and I was wearing my seatbelt, what kind of insurance settlements would I get over time? And do you build that kind of stuff? Because up until that point, I'd really only done like some HTML web design work for them and like some other random kind of IT tasks like a CD autoloader and things like that. Um, so I lied and told him I could, <laughs> even though I never built anything nearing that kind of complexity. So I spent like a week planning this amazing program that would not only predict the average settlement of lawsuits, but also would like design workflows around that. Um, like getting accident reports and medical reports and police reports and things like that. I fly back to Wisconsin and now I sit down and start building this. And I remember the feeling, it just felt like the floor dropped out from underneath me because I thought I knew how to even begin approaching this, but I put in like 40 hours straight and I had barely made a dent in even figuring out how to start that program. So I stopped going to class. I started coding like 20 hours a day. And after like two, three weeks of that, I was still nowhere. And I actually called the CEO and I was like, look, you know, uh, I'm really sorry, but you know, between classes and commitments, like I just don't have time to do this. I can't do it. Uh, I'm really sorry. And he's like, what do you mean, Avi? Like, you know, uh, we already paid you. And I was like, yeah, it's no problem. I'll give you that money back. I hadn't spent it yet. And he's like, look, you can't leave me with nothing. Like I've made promises to our investors that we got some whiz kid in Wisconsin building us this amazing program. Just give me something. Like they don't know what you promised us, but as long as you give me something, I won't look like, uh, I won't look stupid. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna try my best. And I really stopped going to class. And for the next like basically two months, the last semester of sophomore year, I just coded around the clock. Like 20 hours a day, all day, every day. My friends, my roommate, they thought I was crazy. And I, I got like basically the most, you know, what we would call today an MVP, basically that, that prediction algorithm that given some variables uh, in an accident. And I remember in the beginning, I wanted to like map like a hundred different variables. I think I got like six down, like accident type, major injury. Um, and uh, I got it predicting an average settlement based on some LexisNexis data, which was really cool. And then I fly back to school for junior year of college and the semester starts, I'm like three weeks into it, and they call me and they're like, hey, why don't you just drop out and come work here? This program is great. So I drop out and I join the hedge fund full time. So now I'm a, I'm, I'm a real programmer, so to speak, and I'm working in this hedge fund. And they already had a bunch of developers that were kind of maintaining this big Java app that most of the other analysts in kind of the traditional hedge fund or investments, in, investments were working in. And I was working kind of as a solo cowboy engineer on this new investment thesis that was based on personal injury lawsuits. Um, and all the other developers hated me. Like the CTO would constantly complain about my workflows, that I wasn't using version control, you know, that I was building a web app and, you know, you don't build financial applications as web applications, it doesn't make sense. You gotta use a real language like Java, like ASP and PHP are toys. And you know he'd fight with me a lot. He would give me a really hard time. He would question me in front of the CEO and the decisions I was making, uh, and it was tough. 
And I remember, you know, I was really intimidated by those other programmers, especially the CTO. And basically, my solution to the fact that I felt like a fraud and I felt like I wasn't good enough, my solution to that was just to work harder. I was the first one in and the last one to leave every day. I worked every weekend. I would pick up tasks that no one asked me to do. And I just put in as much effort as I could into code. And I remember like there was a really seminal day in my life where I, where I really realized how much I love programming. Um, because I like dropped out of college and like three days later I started work. And I went from basically partying all the time to working like 12 hours a day, seven days a week and living with my parents, which was a nightmare. I remember I was working on this really hairy bug um, and it was like 8 p.m. and uh, I said like, I have to leave the office. I couldn't figure it out. It was really stressing me out. I get off the subway on 231st and Broadway and it's downpouring. Um, and um, you know, the, the walk from, my, from the subway to my parents' house uh, is like up this giant uh, uh, stair hill. And it's like downpouring on me and I'm soaking wet because I don't have an umbrella. And I'm just thinking about this bug and I'm thinking about this bug and I'm, I'm walking up these stairs and suddenly I, I figured it out. And I like ran up the rest of the stairs, got into bed, went to sleep because I was so excited to wake up early in order to like get to work and fix that bug. And that's when I realized how much I love programming. Because if you could do something like 12 hours a day, be like soaking wet, and still be excited about tomorrow, like it's no longer a hobby, you kind of really love it at that point. Uh, and that really like drove me into just working harder than all the other programmers around me. But like no one asked me to do that. Like I volunteered to do that because I wanted to be great. Like I really, really wanted to be an awesome programmer. And the only way I knew to do that was like to work harder. There were probably hundreds of weekends that I pulled the same kind of thing and had nothing to show for it on Monday. But every now and then, if you're willing to keep on working hard, you can actually make magic. I guess with all these stories, what I'm really trying to say is that I'm not that smart and I'm not that talented. But what I lack in ability, I make up for with just effort, relentless effort. And like, I'm not trying to dress it up and make it sound glamorous and like heroic. I promise you there is no montage training sequence where I'm like, da -da 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 -da, learning how to program, you know, becoming great at it. No, it is just hours, hours like at three in the morning alone in my parents' basement in a f office with no windows at a hedge fund. In high school where, no, where I had no friends and no one was encouraging me to do anything besides like get good grades in math. And it took years, years. It seems like I did it really quickly, but that's because I had like a four year head start on everybody. So what, you know, when I look at my students, I'm so sure that they're smarter and better than me because they learn so much more than I did in like six months. It took me years to learn that much code. The only secret I have at how to be great is just be willing to work hard. Be willing to work harder than you ever thought possible. If you're willing to put in inhuman amounts of effort, you will get amazing, amazing returns. I think the hardest part about working hard is fear. Because ultimately, you're gonna have to make sacrifices that only pay off in the long term, and that might go for years, giving you no indication that they're working. So you're gonna have to sacrifice the time with your friends and time watching TV and time doing other hobbies in order to put in effort into one single area that you think is gonna pay off. But there's not gonna be a lot of you know, check markers or flags that, or hoops that indicate to you that, 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 that it's working. So you just have to keep on putting in that effort and at some point you're gonna start doubting yourself and you're gonna start questioning yourself and you're gonna start wondering, is it worth it? Is a sacrifice of my ego and my identity and my life and my time worth this because it doesn't seem to be paying off? And that's the moment where most people that want to be great quit. And I think if you can push through that and just keep on working and have faith that as long as you're putting in the best effort you can and you're not making any excuses, you will get there and it'll work out. Two of my really, my favorite teachers that have inspired me so much are 
Dave Levin and Mike Feinberg that started the KIPP Academy, which is one of the first charter school networks. And their motto is work hard, be nice, which I love. But I wanna, I wanna change it a little bit because I think your motto needs to be the following. Work hard, be nice, stay positive, and have faith that everything will work out. That is like the only key, the only advice I can give people that wanna be great and wanna be awesome is to do that. Just work as hard as you can. Be nice to people around you. Stay positive, because attitude is everything, and then simply have faith that if you do that long enough, it'll work out. That is the only secret to success I've ever known. It's the only thing that's ever worked for me. So if you're wondering how I became this, or how you can become great, just work hard, be nice, stay positive, and have faith that it'll all work out.